I would like to introduce our next speaker. This is uh, Fabio Asolini from the Kaspersky Labs Group, and he's going to be talking to you about some amazing work he's done. Please give him a big hand. This is Andrew. Andrew is a big friend of mine. He's very passionate about security, but he's a regular IT guy working in an insurance company in Brazil. But he's very passionate about uh, phishing attacks. Actually, Andrew is one of the top submitters of phishing on fishtank.com. Probably you guys know. And all of us here use their feed, their database of phishing domains, phishing URLs. He's one of the top guys every day voluntarily sending new things to Fish Tank. And he do it uh, because uh, security is his passion. And he do it actually very, very well. He's very well to report new and fresh phishing attacks. He's so good to do that, that he receive a death threat from Brazilian bad guys. I don't know why uh, some fishers uh, discovered his real identity, his email address, his personal data, and sent to him a death threat. It's written in Portuguese, it's full of bad words, but basically it says you will be killed tomorrow. And this is all your personal data, following the message that it's not on the print screen. Uh, there were his complete name, his phone, the name of his relatives, number of his documents, and so on. Could you imagine that? Why he received this death threat? Because he was doing a good, good job trying to protect people. And sometimes we, as defender, defenders, we face this situation. And talking with him about this um, crazy story, uh, we started a conversation that it was the inspiration of my personal project that I'll present to you today. He did a very honest question to me. Why anti-malware products aren't proactive to block something very simple as a phishing attack? And then my answer was, um, for sure, sure, we are. We are proactive. We use heuristics, we use reputation, we use blacklists and blah, blah, blah. Then he told me, well, most of the attacks, most of the phishing attacks I found, and I report on fish tank, aren't blocked in the beginning by nobody. Zero blocking, zero detection, nothing. My, uh, he told me, my impression is that nobody, uh, uh, nobody cares about this topic. And then my answer to, we, to him was, nothing. I know he was right. He was right. And then he asked me, why the, why the security industry are not proactive, doing as the Minority Report movie, as the precogs, predicting the crime? Why you are not proactive? And these questions hurt me inside, because I have an, an answer to him. And the search for such answers was the start of this project I want to share with you today, the shoot first, ask later, proactive strategies to defend the most fished country in the world. Thank you for this opportunity to stay here, and thank you to stay here in this room and not on another room to see my presentation. Um, I'll share with you what we have about this interesting project. Well, we know a uh, phishing attack is something very simple, but it's something that works. And 91% of uh, uh, all cyber attacks starts with a simple phishing email. We know that DNC attack started, started with phishing messages sent to John Podesta. We know big attacks started small with a very simple phishing email. Huh? For example, this case reported by Brian Krebs of a bank in Virginia that lost $2.4 million. And that tax starts small with phishing emails. Or the great philosopher of the IT industry on Twitter, 
the crook once said, give a man zero day and he'll have access for life. Teach a man to fish and he'll have access for life. And this is completely true. Because big attacks, sometimes an APT attack, start with a very simple phishing email. And when we talk about phishing, Brazil is the country number one on our statistics, more attacked by this kind of attack. It's in the top. And this is the, our heat map from 2017. I will show you numbers. Brazil is on the top with Australia and China. Almost 30% of every Brazilian are attacked at least once per year by a phishing, by a phishing message. And now some uh, more numbers about this threat in Brazil. As you can see here, this is from 2017. And 2017, we blocked 36 million phishing attacks only in Brazil. It's an average of uh, 101,000 attacks per day, per day. And this here is the Black Friday, expected, huh? Let's look for 2018. In the seven first month, months of the year, 2018, we already registered the double of attacks. 40 million phishing attacks blocked in Brazil, an average of 222,000 attacks per day. And this one here is the workup. This is the situation in the country, and it's something very interesting. Well, uh, we know very well all the strategies the cyber criminals are using to do this, their attacks. They use email, they use SMS, they use telephone calls. They use advertisement on Google and Bing as well. They use fake profile on social networks. Um, they hack it websites. And we know how they do it. We know it very well. All of us, we know it. Uh, but the attacks... Uh, more effective, they are creating domains. They buy a domain with a name very similar to the real one. They put a, a digital certificate there from Let's Encrypt, and then they start the attack. Who registry this kind of domain with a name very similar? Well, domain squaters, fishers, regular users, and of course, of course, legit owners, they re register as well to protect their brand. That's what they do. And when I, uh, when I tell to everybody that Brazil is the country of the fraud, people laugh like, come on, we have fraud everywhere. And then I'll, I'll show some examples that we have there, and people, the conclusion is, wow, there is a lot of fraud in Brazil. And I'll show you some cases. We have fraud everywhere. Where? Every loyalty program in Brazil, they are fished. For example, gas stations in Brazil, they have a loyalty program. So uh, in the end of one year, you have some points and you can earn free gas. These loyalty programs are fished as well because cyber criminals want free gas. Other point, uh, every service of the Brazilian government are fished. This is something really incredible. Um, especially the health services, the public health services in Brazil, it's fished as well. And cyber criminals want to enter in the system aiming to change the position of some citizens and waiting lists, for example, for a surgery. They do that. Other interesting scenario, Data brokers, in the legit data brokers in Brazil, they have credit scores for every citizen, uh, the same he as here in the US. And cyber criminals want to broke, and they did it. They broke their database aiming to change the credit scores of someone else. So this guy will have a good credit to buy things. But the most interesting case for me, uh, some. Telecoms as well, they are fished because cyber criminals want to do the SIM swap. But the most interesting case for me was fishing against IBAMA. IBAMA is the Government Environment and Nature Institute. They are responsible to control the Amazon forest. 
and how companies will extract wood from the Amazon forest. And some time ago, I started to see fishing against Obama employees. And, that, and then I started to wonder, why? Why cyber criminals are fishing this institution from the Brazilian government? And then after three weeks, I found out why. They broke into, uh, into Obama's system. They entered there and they unlocked 23 companies. These companies, they were previously blocked to extract wood from the Amazon forest. They broke into the system. They unlocked these companies and they were free to extract wood from the Brazilian forest and they did it. They did it for a long time, and the result was $11 million in wood from the Amazon forest that was extracted illegally. And this wood uh, fill 1,400 um, 1, trucks with wood. And everything started with a fishing message. Can you see that? That's why we say Brazil is the country of fraud. Fraud everywhere. Everything that is online is fished in Brazil. Well, 58% of all these phishing attacks are against financial institutions. Bank, credit cards, uh, credit unions, and so on. It's natural because cybercriminals want money fast. So 58% of all these attacks are against banks. Okay, so uh, most of the uh, more effective attacks, they started with a domain, as I told you previously. They regist registering a domain using a name very similar. And look, this is the window of opportunity that we defenders, we have. Because between the registration of the domain and the moment that the bad guy will use it for attack, we have a gold window of opportunity that, as far as I know, nobody are using on our industry. And when I decided to, to start this project, uh, some people told me, come on, APG. APG is more fancy, is more cool. Why do you... Why do you want to look for phishing attacks? That's something, come on, that affects everybody for the masses. Why? And actually, my department on Kaspersky, we are like specialized to deal with APT attacks. And I agree, these attacks are out of the box, they are really cool, but we are still missing the basics. I mean, we as defenders, we still have space to improve our phishing detection. And let me tell you in the name of our industry, because I checked detections of the attacks I saw, and oh, it's really bad. Our phishing detection is still really, really bad for the entire security industry, especially from the companies that are providing protection uh, for the endpoint. We have a lot to improve. So that's why, okay, APT is cool, Mauer is cool, I agree, but we still are missing a lot of opportunities to increase our detections on phishing attacks. So as I told you, we have a, a golden opportunity between the registration and the when the attack really starts. And uh, looking for the who is data, we can see who registered a domain. Okay, so uh, with this idea in mind, we decided to t in the beginning of 2014, we, we started this experiment. We decided to monitor all the fresh domains registered on internet using these names. As 58% of all the attacks we saw was against financial institutions. Okay, let me track all the new and fresh domains registered using these names. So these are financial, uh, financial institutions, banks, credit cards, operating in Brazil and in Latin America. Some of them are very multinational, as Walmart, for example. Uh, and we decided to, to monitor every day 
what the new and fresh domains register using these names. And you know, this is the same technique used by brand protection companies such as, um, I forget their name, <laughs> but, but I'll tell you later. Um, it's the same technique. So what the owner of the brand, what they do? Someone registered a domain using my name. Why? So I'll go there, I'll talk with the owner. Why are you you're using my brand? This is my brand, copyrighted, and so on. So we have companies that offer this kind of brand protection. It's the same idea. So we started to monitor, and we saw things like this. Uh, someone else registered a name using uh, a, re a domain using the name of the Spanish bank, or someone else registered a domain using the name of a very important bank in Latin America. But in the moment that we visit the URL, you see this. Future home of something quite cool. I mean, there is nothing there yet. Because sooner or later, I know in this domain will be something bad. Normally, a fishing fish. OK. Uh, then uh, we decided to collect this a uh, lot of data. And then we started to use it the who is database as a reputation and classification tool using this, uh, this idea, these crit criteria. We did a correlation of the email of the registrant. So uh, we have an email address. This guy registered a bunch of domains. And then we started to track everything. Um, we uh, decided to check, for example, if the domain was registered using a free e webmail or um, a temporary mail address. We also check it for invalid who is data, especially typos, and uh, if the domain is fresh or not, and the reputation of the hosting server, where the domain was registered. We decided to create this criteria. And the data of these this new and fresh domains, we uh, started with dailychanges.com. They offer you a list of new and fresh domains you can find registered every day. And then we decided to play a little bit with typos, typos creating, and so on. And then we used this tool, Harry, to do uh, string similarity. It's the, uh, I, I don't know if my my uh, German pronunciation is OK. Le Levestein. Levestein's distance. Uh, we decided to use the Levestein distance and string similarity to find uh, typo creating domains. And then to complete all the sources of this project, the certificate transparency idea to find new SSL domains, especially on Let's Encrypt. And putting everything together, we did the crazy decision to block all these domains. And then the, the reaction was inter in very interesting, the reaction, especially from our guys of our anti-phishing team. Like, the first reaction was, what the hell are you doing? Why you blocked this domain? There is nothing there. I visit the domain. There is not. Why did you block it? And then I need to explain. OK, look, these are using the name of a bank, but the domain was not registered by a bank. And I block it because I know sooner or later something bad will be there. And then they told me, mm, OK, but I think you have legal problems. And then the next reaction was of our legal department. Hello, Fabio. Why are you blocking domains that there is nothing there in the same explanation? And then after some time, our guys started to see the good results and the outstanding results we get. And then they realized that this was a good technique. This was something good. But the reaction was very, very interesting in the beginning. And then we decided to block everything, no matter who registered. If you, it's using a brand, uh, brand uh, trademark of a bank of a, or a credit card company, we block it. So five years shooting first than Fishers. These are the results. 
these are the first results we get. One hundred thousand phishing domains blocked in advance. Well, false positive, of course, we have, but very low rate, less than one percent. Um, and actually, this was uh, very effective not only against phishing domains but also against malware domains and also some APG campaigns that they uh, use the same idea. For example, there is a lot of bad domains registered using the name Windows Update. There is a lot. And we decided to block it as well. And when we realized, wow, this is blocked, but who did it? Fabio, w Fabio, why you block it? Well, I block it because it's using the name Windows Update. It do not belong to Microsoft. Simple. So um, it was very effective, and I'll show you some results. For example, this domain um, I blocked it in March 13, and after three days, uh, the guys from Netcraft that are dedicated to uh, find and block uh, phishing, they found it after three days, and it arrived on our database, but the website was already there because we blocked it in advance. Another good, interesting case, 13 days in advance. I block it on February 25, and our robot from our anti-fishing guys found it on March 11, after thir 13 days. Or this case, after 15 days, I block it on, March on February 20, and our robot found this domain used in a phishing attack on March 7. And of course, there are cyber. The most common behavior from fishers and cyber criminals, they register a bunch of domains and they started to use one, two, three, or four domains in their first, first attacks. Um, they start to burn these domains of the bunch they, they registered. But some of them are very lazy. For example, this case here. The guy uh, registered a domain in June, and we blocked it in June 12, but he decided to use the domain after four months, in October. And when he started the attack, everything was already blocked in advance. You don't need so much, uh, you don't need to do so much things. It's, it's, it's this simple very simple, but uh, it's a strong connected to the language of the phishing attack. For, let me give you one example. We are monitoring a uh, name of banks, and in Portuguese is banco, but in Spanish is banca, and in French, bank. If you use these keywords, you find a lot of badness in your uh, daily feed of new and fresh domains registered. You find a lot of things. And as far as I know, nobody on our industry are using this data uh, to perform uh, proactive protection. And now, uh, we realized it. We were, in the, we were doing the good thing when this case arrived in my hands, and I'll show you. This, this case is very, very, very interesting. Uh, there is a group of fishers in Brazil, they are very, very organized. They do fishing only against big corporations, only. And they do it over telephone. They call the company, they presented himself as employee of a bank or employee of something important, and they ask to call with the financial director. And then, talking with this financial director, they ask him to visit a specific website because they are from the bank and they need to do something with the bank account. And they are very smart because the phishing domain they, they were using, it's on only in the moment of the call. If you try to access it before or after the call, it's not available. 
and they are very smart because they do a lot of filtering. So only a range of IP from this company will see the content of the domain. And uh, every other access from other IPs will see nothing. So they do IP filtering. And it's very, very targeted. And against this attack, it's quite hard to protect because it's something very, very targeted. And when this case arrived in my hands, it was a proof to me that we were doing the good thing. We were doing a good approach to protect our customers. I'll share with you. I have the recording of the guy on the phone. Yeah, I have the recording and I'll show you. So let me detail the case. This fraudster, he called a health insurance company, our customer in Brazil, on December 7. And in the recording, he asked the financial director to enter in a specific website, as I told you previously. And then this specific, dom the, the, the fraudster uh, presented himself as an employee of the Santander Bank. Santander is a very important bank in, in Latin America. They are from Spain. They have also operations here in the US. Um, he asked the financial director to visit this domain, SantanderAgencia.com. This domain was registered on December 2. The call was in December 7. We blocked this domain on December 3 by the morning. We block it. And I, I'll show you right now the recording of the fraudster calling with the financial director, trying to convince her to enter in the website. But the website was already blocked. The audio is in Portuguese, but don't worry, you, you see subtitles in English and you, you understand everything. Let's see it. Alô. É, bom dia, senhora Roseli? Oi, não? Aqui quem fala é Marcos, da Central de Atendimento Santa Maria Empresarial novamente. Tudo bem com a senhora? Tudo bem, e você? Tudo ótimo. Senhora Roseli, a senhora conseguiu verificar com o Lucas para fazer a liberação do link? Ah, ele fez a liberação aqui, porque ele, ele, ele já até saiu da empresa já. Foi para Ribeirão Preto, então ele deixou Sim. liberado aqui. Mas aí eu entro lá, www.santanderagencia.com. Isso, é. exatamente. Creio eu que a senhora não estava conseguindo antes, devido a, a central se entrar em contato né, após as 10 às 11 horas. A senhora quer tentar agora? Vou, vou tentar, mas... Ok. Olha que ali... Creio eu que é abrir para a senhora, né? Não, até, até a hora ele falou que tinha desbloqueado e não tinha nada na página. Certo. Certo. A senhora está pelo Google Chrome? Não, estou no equipo... Espera aí, então. Deixa eu ver se consigo abrir o outro. Isso. Tenta pelo Chrome. Geralmente o Chrome a gente sempre faz os agendamentos tudo ok, né? Tá. É o www.santanderagencia.com Ah, mas aparece a senhora, não é possível acessar esse site? Certo, a senhora tentou pelo Google Chrome, né? Isso. Só confirma o link para mim, o www.santanderagencia.com. Certo. Será que quer tentar pelo Mozilla? Só para a gente tirar essa dúvida. Vixe, eu não Já tenho aqui no site. Né? Não, não tem. Certo. O Santander Agência, a senhora digitou tudo junto, né? Tudo junto. www.santanderagencia.com sem o BR, né? Não, sem o BR. As you can see, the fraudster try everything. Use Google Chrome, use Mozilla, but our product blocked the website. Actually, these fraudsters, they registered more than 30 phishing domains. 
using the name of banks in Latin America, and all of them blocked in advance. We can do that. It's simple. We have the technology, we, we are smart, we have the data, we can do that. And that these are the outstanding results we are having on phishing attacks in Brazil that I'm sharing with you today. We as an industry, we can use the same idea and uh, the same technique worldwide to protect our customers, people that uh, trust on our products, trust on our technologies. We can do that. But we are not, because when I check one of the websites of this, of this gang, of these fraudsters on VirusTotal, only Kaspersky are blocking it. Okay, I know VirusTotal is not a tool to check that. I know, I know it. I know very well. But come on. We can do it. They are using the name of banks, big corporations, and of course, this affects the regular user and companies as well. Okay, but uh, what was the reaction of the bad guys? Uh, can you think they saw it? Ah, okay, uh, they are blocking. Of course, they reacted. The first reaction was new phishing domains in Unicode. So we started to see domains like this, whatsapp.com, with very strange characters, very strange letters. Or this one here, this is a cryptocurrency exchange with some crazy characters. Or this one here as well. And everything is phishing, but all in Unicode. Not only using Unicode strings, but also uh, digital certificates in the phishing domain. This one was very clever, very, very clever against a Brazilian bank. When you check the digital certificate, you see the correct URL. It was their, their strategy to continue attack users, and that's what they are doing right now because if you monitor the if you use the keyword of the name of the bank and they change some character you know the result you will not see this phishing domain and another very interesting reaction from bad guys was this case look to this URL it's very very rare very strange look to this URL when you put your eyes there you think ah uh, this is ipv6 are you all in IPv6? No, it's not exactly IPv6. It's a hybrid uh, model that uh, browsers accept nowadays. It's a hybrid between IPv6 and IPv4. If you want to know more, RFC 4038 there. And we started to see phishing and malware attacking such this one with this crazy URL. But of course, it's not very, very effective because when a regular user, would they, when they saw this URL, they look, mm, no, this is strange. It's not so effective as uh, uh, using a domain. Okay, everything was cool. We are blocking everything. And then a big tragedy. GDPR happened. A big tragedy to our project. Then we started to see who is data such. This one, knock, knock, who is not there? Or this one, GDPR masked, everything masked. So, oh my goodness, it's our end. What can I do right now? Uh, okay, now um, our challenge is to do it without the who is. Uh, of course, the who is this uh, GDPR project was a big impact on the who is database. We are still waiting the guys from ICANN to do something, but uh, nothing so far. It was a big impact. We don't have more emails to do the correlation. No more emails. But we, it's still possible to block uh, based on the name guessing. It's, it's risky, I know. It's very risky, but it's too possible, and we are doing that. I think um, I can tell you in the end of the year, our, our false positive rate will increase a little bit. 
Uh, and also, it's still possible because there is a field in the Hui's data called registrant organization. And this data can reveal who is the owner of the domain. I'll show you later one example. Um, we and we are looking for alternatives, and good ideas are welcome. Okay, we um, think to ask the owner of the brand, but it, it takes a lot of time to contact the correct people, asking, "Hey, did you register this domain?" Or we uh, try it to create a database of legit domains, but this is something very huge to do, and time-consuming as well. Um, what we are using right now, passive DNS. Okay, we have here a new domain. Where is it registered? Oh, where is it hosted? So we are using passive DNS in a way. Uh, so this is the registrant organization. For example, these uh, .app domains, they belong to Google. And a lot of fishers are putting their domains there. Like we have their uh, Itaú, it's a big bank in Latin America, and everything is redacted for privacy, redacted for privacy, redacted for privacy. But we have in the in the middle the registrant organization that it's someone else, it's a girl, it's not the bank. So block it. Okay, to conclude my presentation, my presentation in a nutshell. Brazil topped the rankings of phishing attacks worldwide on our uh, statistics. And I believe the reason is doing this technique. We are blocking a lot of bad things. And while we are with this project, Brazil remains in the top. Some attacks are very local. I mean, uh, do you remember I told you they are very linked to the language? So for example, for me, it will be a little hard to do the same with in China, because I don't speak Chinese, but it's very connected to the language, so you need uh, some locals or people that speak the language that you want to monitor. This brand monitoring thing, uh, it's good to find this new and fresh domains using some, uh, some name of a brand. Um, the GDPR can be a problem, um, but we are still blocking. And we are looking for um, for alternatives to continue with this good, good project. And I personally think our industry, we can do the same. We can do the same to protect our users. We can do the, u the same to boost our phishing detection. Not only phishing, but malware as well, and everything that uses the same idea of bad domains using uh, good names. You can, um, some guys in our industry already realize that this is something good uh, to do. And I want to call everybody here to do the same in your products. Uh, with your technology, we can increase and get very good results as I show you today. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And I think, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And I think we have time for questions, Nate. Yep, we got 10 minutes. Good. This is a great talk. Um, thank thank you. you. So isn't the real solution, though, to block this using the same techniques you're talking about at the registration time, rather uh, than after the fact, because only your customers are protected, right? I agree. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we try to do it as soon as the domain is registered. I mean, uh, we receive a feed of new and fresh domains. Uh, we receive it twice per day. We do a filtering in this. It's a huge database of new and fresh domains every day. We do a filtering with the keywords we are monitoring, and then we program our robot to block it automatically. As a, okay. why, why, do the, why does the registrar let these get registered in the first mm. place? Isn't that what's really broken here? OK, it varies according to the country, but I'll tell you what's going on in Brazil. I talked with the guys from the uh, Registro BR, and they told me, they, according to the local law, they can't um, 
forbidden people to register a new domain. Like uh, they have the right to register it and they can uh, do something after someone, some company, some security company sent them a booze report. Like they are using this name, this name is mine, but they can't uh, avoid or forbidden people to register a new domain. Uh, in, in the first moment, it, it's. I think this is connected to some local legislation, and it, it, it depending on the country, it can vary. More questions. Yep. Uh, awesome presentation, Thank you. and kudos to you for pushing through legal to make this happen. I know that can be a big challenge. That's a great success. Uh, I just have a couple of questions about how it was implemented. Did you block? these domains for all Kaspersky customers, or did you limit the blocks to those that you knew were in Brazil because you knew that was the most vulnerable population? Okay, good question. Uh, initially, we started um, small, <laughs> like uh, nobody trusted me, like, what are you doing? Uh, are you sure you want to block this domain? There is nothing there. And then we started small, and according we saw the results, we, right now, we are automated. I mean, we do this automatically, blocking the domain, and it's uh, distributed to all our customers of all products, mobile, endpoints, servers, and so on. Because we achieved uh, some very good results, and the guys decided to do it, um, or to block these domains worldwide. So we don't have like a, a separate uh, database for Brazilians and uh, like detection databases for Brazilians and for Argentinians and so on. We have only one and we are doing it uh, worldwide right now. And do you have the similar analysis for other countries or is it just Brazil right now? Okay, right, no. Right now we are, uh, we are, um, we are using these techniques with four languages. And why languages? Because as I told you, this is something very linked to language. We are using with brands in Portuguese, Spanish, French, and Italian. Uh, our plan is to, uh, is to expand for more languages. Uh, with English as well, we, we did some tests. But right now, uh, we are in these languages. Uh, awesome. our, our idea is to expand. Thank you. Thank you. More questions. I uh, appreciate the, the uh, slides here. Um, so a question, are you doing anything with uh, hashing the images of those, you know, those sites that say new and exciting website coming? That way you can start looking for that as a pattern or even shoving the data that you're finding into something like urlscan.io and then hunting those image hashes, looking for those new domains, mm -hmm. and then setting your block on that. Okay, good idea. We are not using it, but uh, what we are doing is when we found some f some attack very fresh, I mean, uh, against a new brand or uh, a very first time that we saw this phishing attack, we save uh, we save the page, a copy of the page, and we send to our guys on anti phishing to improve our heuristic detection that we are. Uh, using as well, but not using uh, the service that you told. But it's a good idea. We I, I can check it later. Awesome. I'll send you an email. Okay. Hello. Uh, hi. Thanks for the here. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Thanks for the wonderful talk. Um, I was wondering what was your false positive rate at the beginning when you started blocking those domains, and how did you deal with your legal team at the beginning when you didn't have those promising results to validate your um, you know, uh, thought process. Sorry, say again, but slowly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. So I was thinking, what was your false positive rate at the beginning when uh -huh. you started blocking those domains? Uh -huh. And the second question is, how did you deal with your legal team in the beginning when you did not have, you know, these promising results to validate your thought process? Okay. Uh, well, initially, the false positive rates was a bit high. It was like in the first... Uh, uh, look, w it was 7%. It was uh, high, so we, we tried to improve uh, things, and we did it. And the cases were of the false positives we, uh, I saw, they were like very, very specific, and the impact was not big. 
um, initially, but then we were improving our technique and right now it's less than 1%. Uh, about the legal thing, it was like a friend uh, question sent to Dan, like, are you sure what are you doing? I mean, it was more in the position like, are you sure nobody will sue us because you are blocking this domain, there is nothing there? Then it, like I gave them, um, I explained it to them, um, the, um, I explained it to them the, uh, the data we had, like I think for this, this, and this reason, this will be something malicious. And after some times we saw the result and that, like they were uh, satisfied with the answer. But uh, it can be a problem in the beginning of some companies as well. Of course, depend on legislations and so on. But in our case, uh, the good results was the best answer. More questions? Hey, Fabio. Hey. Uh, thanks for the, the presentation. I'm from Brazil, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just had a few questions about, like, um, so are you guys using solely like your data, uh, the data that you guys are captured? Uh, because you mentioned that like in the beginning, Fish Tank. Um, yeah. uh, I used to be at OpenDNS and they had a very similar approach to block like bad domains. Good. Um, so do, do you guys use like other sources to like aggregate the data or is mostly the data you guys are harvesting as well? No, uh, we had a, a plenty of uh, fishing sources, not only fish tank. Mm -hmm. We have a lot. But uh, this technique was good because we realized that we were uh, checking the effectiveness of all the sources we had. This one was the most effective in the case of Brazilian fishing. So, mm -hmm. um, like, we measured uh, one of them, uh, each, we would measure each. Um, uh, each source of phishing that we, we receive, fish tank is one of them. And then we realized that this source of the brand monitoring thing was the, the, the most effective. I mean, the first one to detect a uh, fresh phishing uh, domain and block it. Um, so or right now we are applying such idea to all the sources that we receive. And uh, this is interesting because you need to tweak the technique because it's seasonal. I mean, uh, during the World Cup, you see more fishing attack related to the World Cup. Or during the Olympics, it's the same. So you need to tweak the keywords that you are filtering uh, during the year. For example, right now, I'm monitoring special the Black Friday keyword <laughs> for attacks related to the Black Friday that uh, in it will happen in in some months, um, so you need to tweak. But in in all the resources that we are receiving, fishing fish tank is one of them. Uh, these are were the most proactive. Okay, and and um, uh, just a follow up question. And you guys, um, you guys are not blocking through DNS, right? You guys are blocking uh, through no. signatures. No, we are no, we are or blocking on our cloud protection. On the cloud uh, actually, protection, we okay. we are blocking uh, on a two way. The f the first one are on our cloud detection because it's faster than mm -hmm. others. And for customers that are not using your cloud protection, we are uh, blocking in, in our database. OK, lo locally on each. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. To do a local blocking. Because some customers decide to not use the cloud protection. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. More questions? Hi, thank you so much uh, for your talk over here. Sorry, uh, I guess <laughs> saying over here doesn't help much. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was just, just curious, how do you actually go about detecting false positives? Do, does the domain owner have to contest it and, and let you know that you blocked their site? Or how do you actually t know when you've blocked a, a valid site? OK, uh, about false positives. Um, the false positive sometimes happens with s a very specific keyword. I'll give you one example, try to, to uh, try to explain to you. We have a big government bank in Brazil called Caixa. And Caixa in Portuguese also means box. So you need to take care with all the new domains registered with the keyword Caixa, because sometimes you it will block a website of a company selling boxes. So uh, for some speci very specific keywords, you need 
sometimes a human approval, like, okay, all, these are all the domains with the name Caixa. Okay, this is related with the bank, this is not, uh, an example, um, caixaupdate.com. Okay, update, update the bank account, so phishing. Or uh, new boxes for sale.com, oh, this is related to the boxes. So for some very specific keywords, you need to tweak your technique, but it, uh, it works very well with another brands. Especially when the brand are very unique, I mean, you have uh, this brand, this is something very, very unique that worldwide, you will not see it and uh, nothing more. For example, Bradesco, another big Brazilian bank, you will not see it. Uh, it's always related to the bank. Or Santander, Santander is a keyword with problem as well because we have cities with the name Santander. So uh, in the beginning, our false positives was related with uh, the uh, websites of the, the mayors of the city of Santander and so on. So you need to do a special tweak. And for some cases, you need human approval. I, it can be, uh, you need to tweak the technique, but it, it still works. Okay? You're welcome. More questions? Yep. One, two. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. Um, all of my friends and relatives, they basically trust the website if they see this like a green lock, mm -hmm. which tells it's secure, right? Yeah. And uh, Fisher's just started to issue let's encrypt free certificates yes. for the websites uh, to get more trust from the users. Yes. So just a suggestion, uh, even though you don't have the access in some cases to who is database, and you don't really see who actually registered the domain, how about checking? So since this information is public, how about checking uh, the new certificates mm -hmm. that was issued by Let's Encrypt yes. Certification Authority and uh, correlated with the keywords like okay. we are doing banks that. or I don't know if you're already doing that or not. But yes, we are, we are doing that because we have some sources, uh, fresh domains and the certificate transparency, they have feeds of especially Let's Encrypt that is most popular uh, today to issue new digital certificates. So we do the same, like oh, these are all the new domains that requested a SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt. Okay, let's me filter all these big lists with the keywords I'm monitoring and block it. So the same idea we are using and we need it because as you told, a lot of phishing domains with digital certificates and this can be a problem because the user, the regular user are mixing things, think, oh, this website have a green lock, so it's okay, but in fact, it's not. Uh, More questions? Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Fabio, great, great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, you. Actually brings good memories because uh, a few years ago I was doing, uh, doing the same uh, research for Australia Postal Service Fission. Okay. I was ransomware attacks and it worked really great. Uh, a couple of questions for you. The first one is, um, do you find challenging that for some TLDs you cannot easily get the new domain registration feeds? Like .com is easy, but some geographies will not actually tell you which domains have been registered. Uh -huh. And the second question is, did you find an S record correlation, like name server, IP, for those domains to be the useful uh, signal to make decisions? Okay, first question, yes. For some registrant companies, it's quite hard to obtain the list. Uh, but uh, I can tell you later some companies that uh, provide us uh, the list of new and fresh domains. We have two or three of them in the market that they are very good. Uh, you can obtain this list freely on dailychanges.com. It's not very complete, but it can be a start like to, to establish the project. But we have like two or three companies that are providing us this list every day and their visibility are really good. And the other question, sorry. Oh yes, the name server. This is something very interesting because uh, Fishers put all their bad websites all together at the same server. So, okay, I find one. 
from this one, you'll find all of them together at the same server. And this is um, something amazing because uh, you can block everything. And um, uh, you can do it automatically, but uh, right now we are facing this problem because um, I think this is due to GDPR. You are, uh, I, we are facing some problems to see all the websites hosted at the same server. Sometimes this information are not available easily but it's a good way to uh, improve detections. Okay. Hey, uh, Fabio. Uh, Hi there. Great. Straight. Hey. <laughs> hey, this is Kunal from Intel Corporation. So uh, I was wondering if you are extending your research for things like fake news. And I'm also interested to know how do you go about blocking a domain who is just serving a, a you know, some kind of stenographic stuff which happened during Korea games. And so what are all the factors that you consider and can you extend that for fake news as well? Mm -hmm. uh, no, we, we are not uh, looking for fake news or so on. Uh, the project is started and till the, the, this moment we are uh, focused on financial institutions right now. So. Um, I don't know, maybe in the future we can expand to look at other areas. Uh, we, d we started with government organizations and financial institutions, uh, brands and names. Um, maybe in the future, I, I don't know, let's see. But it's a possibility as well. Actually, uh, interesting, we are right now in, um, in election time in Brazil and I started like two weeks ago to look for new domains using the name of the politicians there, and I found uh, very interesting things there. I can I can uh, talk right now. <laughs> what exactly we are investigating? Okay, more questions. Well, uh, actually, uh, I think we are running out of time because okay. we got to get everybody out and in who wants to switch rooms. Thank you again. Please give a big hand to Fabio. Thank you very much. Thank you.